Big shout out to the sponsor, Helix Sleep. Thank you guys so much for providing the perfect matches for us, baby Gorgi. I went to helixsleep.com slash wild and I found the Perfy Worthy mattress. Thank you. I'm sleeping like a baby. Yes. If the pandemic's got you down, COVID's got you down, get the right message to be comfy wimpy. Mm. <laughs> yeah, full house. Wow. Hello. Hope you're ready for a good week. Hope you had a good weekend and week. It's the hyenas. We got a full team. We're all back in the house. The starting five is here. If we were the show full house, who's who? Um, okay. Who's who? So I'll say that Because I'm John Stamos. I'm you're John, John Stamos. You're John Stamos. I'll be Bob Saget. Yeah. Um Yeah. The, um and Who's the little girl twins? Mike and Zach are the Ulster <laughs> twins. And and Venetia is Kimmy Gibbler. Yeah, and who's Hey Bert? <laughs> hey Bert? Yeah. It's the fucking the, the dirt on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, welcome to another episode. Yeah. Yeah, Chrissy's here. I'm just kidding. I'm gonna be honest with you guys. Yeah. Right now, I'm I'm Wait, fucking hung over, guy. You being hung are you being honest with his guys? Or are you being hung are you being honest with his guy? I'm being honest with you guy and guys. Yeah, I mean, are you a, are you a chain out guy or are you are yeah. you are you a guy with a chain who that a, happens to be out? Guy, I'm 100 percent nauseous. Yeah. Okay. I could go down. I feel like I'm gonna pass. The kids hung over. Patty Fly Balls called me yesterday at 6 p.m. I was fucking snuggled cute in that love sack. You had a real city worker night last Listen night. Listen to the rain and then Patty Fly Balls was like, I am fucking the radio game. And I said, Why? He said, I have the radio game. And I said, All right. So he told me to meet him. At um, Penzi, it's called, right next to MSG. And then we just started banging out Oktoberfest. Yeah. And uh, and then it got, by the time the first period started at 7.05, I was already two beers in. And uh, so I was getting I was getting Which little. Which means four, because you live your life two in. I live my life two in, right. Yeah. So I was loosey-goosey. Yeah. And then it got one of those things where a guy, I don't remember how I got home. I mean, all, I looked up, I looked up, I looked at my phone this morning, and the last text I had for you was, Chris, please don't hit any Muslims. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was That's about what to you say. I've been, mean, yeah, you've been, you've been cracking a few brews lately. Yeah, and you told a couple of FFs what you feel. What I feel. Well, the you've, tr- you've let some things fly. Well, the truth is, you had to check a couple of guys. I had to check a couple. Guys got to be checked once in a while. Yeah, I, I, ch- I, yeah, I had to check a couple of guys, and it's one of those things. I'm telling you, man, it's just I just been out there living my fucking life. Yeah, just celebrating, just celebrating. Who I am. Yeah. And who I am is just a nice Nazi. No, I, no more of those <laughs> jokes. No more, no more of those yeah, jokes. No sorry. More that NNs. was the last one. Yeah, that's that's sorry, 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 sorry. Yeah, I don't know yeah. where you got this nice Nazi th- and then thing coming. Yeah, yeah this, no, sorry, you said sorry, it sorry. last episode. What does it yeah. mean, nice I Nazi? I just feel happy and free because I like a girl and she yeah. likes me back. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's yeah. what it is. Yeah, but I told yeah. you there's a checklist we got to go over to make yeah, sure it's, it's good. Uh, yeah, yeah. She, Should we go over the checklist? Yeah, okay, let's go over the checklist. No names. All all she's known as is 420. Yeah, 420. Because that's her birthday. Which, unfortunately, like we said, I think it was last episode. That's exactly the way that certain people were identified by your ancestors. Yeah, four twenty. Just by num- numbers. By numbers. So unfortunately, yeah, four twenty. She knows about the podcast. She knows she's called four twenty, and she just remained safe. So she's listening right she now. She told me, "Hi, how are you? Hi, how are you? No, hi." She, she told me she won't join the Patreon or anything, but she said she is just here for the content. Okay, I'm just, gonna co- I'm, gonna, I'm gonna just come out and ask it. Yeah. Oh, so she said I'm here for the content. She so just she said has she listened. is here for the content, but she's just does she have fakes? I'm just coming straight. She's out got of no answer. fakes. She's got really. She's got. She's got. She's got no fakes. She's got natties. She's got natties, and she's got a nice fat ass. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Yo. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. So, um, yeah. We, we you know we we gotta, gotta just okay. We gotta figure out. There's 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 uh we got there's a whole line of questioning you gotta figure out, guys. Okay, when you're out there and you're you're trying to date a girl, yes. you, you want to meet a girl. It's like John Travolta said in Saturday Night Fever. Yeah, you got your nice girls and then you got your other type of girls. I'm yeah. not going to say it because I'm I'm a gentleman. Who is? I know who was. Yeah. yeah, you got you, you two types of girls. Yeah, well that wasn't me. That was Patrick Mulroney. That, that was Pat. Yeah, this is yeah. How you doing? This is Sean Terry. You know, I gotta say something, right? Yeah. I fucking Bernie and all these fucking people. I hear Bernie one more time. Yeah, I tell you right fucking now. Yeah, I'm gonna fucking put you in the grave. Yeah, all right. Yeah. I don't want no fucking socialist yeah. in my country. That's what it is. Yeah, if you want a fucking socialist, we'll catapult you right over that it's, fucking wall. That's what it is. Yeah, yeah. 
So uh, talk for a second while I find it. Okay. So just real quick, because I forgot to do this in the first two minutes. Um, real quick, I just want to say, encompassing, we're not going to get into it. I just want to say, Vanity is screwed in. Moving on. Um, I, <laughs> I just want to say, and then, and then I want to And she told you that you could not be Chrissy Truth Serums and I, say anything she, more. She said I she's say fucking screwed, screwed in. Girl screwed in. You could say that. She's borderline, tr she's borderline sniffing truffles. Yeah, she's fucking wild. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, so and Mike Emoji Face is back. Yeah, Mike Emoji Face is back. He's breathing on my neck. Yeah. <laughs> um, so go to um, historyhyenas.com for all our live stuff coming up. Patreon.com slash Bay Ridge Boys. Gramercy Theater is a hard sellout. Now, there's not even any, there's not, we're not even going to be queuing back. Like, oh, let's open tickets. We open tickets and then you guys fucking ate them like wild hyenas and spin them back out. You ate the bones and everything. It's a hard sellout. ChristyComedy.com, GiannisPapasComedy.com for all upcoming dates. New York City, November 29th and 30th, Gotham Comedy Club for me, and November 21st, 23rd, House of Comedy, Minnesota, Q. Yeah, and also, guys, go follow Mike. Go follow yes. Mike. What's your handle? Uh, Mike, Mike B. Swartz. Yeah, Mike, we were barely staying afloat without you this week. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, unfortunately, uh, I am I, very we came buoyant. Up, yeah, no, we came yeah, up with it. Yeah. Yeah. We came up with a new rule. If you if you leave and, and, and aren't here for another Monday, Chris is going to roll out a catapult, and yeah. you and all your family members are going fucking over the wall. <laughs> over the wall. Yeah, yeah, you're getting over the wall. No matter where you land, you're going up in the air. Yeah, if you leave again, you're not going to have to explain stuff to me. You're going to have to explain stuff to ICE, because yeah. I'm calling them. Yeah. <laughs> and we also figured it out that, you know, if, if Trump gets reelected, you know, we, we tried to see if there was a dilemma. What if they tried to deport your family? Well, they can't because my, my family, uh, they're Puerto Ricans. Yeah. So they're naturalized born American citizens. Yeah, but what if he changes the rules? If he changes... You're going to be torn. If he changes the rules, like you said, we're going to have to hide my daughter. Daughter, like Aunt Frank. <laughs> <laughs> just what it is. It's the, just what it is. Baby, get back down into the it's salon. It's just what it is, but the situation's not safe. <laughs> <laughs> Telling Puerto Ricans to be quiet Wild. is going to be insane. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but my kid's got a violent streak, and she... Let's be honest, she, my my kid will hit an officer. It's yeah. just what it is. It's just what it is. Yeah, and she'll call him officer. She will call. Yeah, she yeah. say listen. And that's the last thing he's going to hear before he gets struck. Yeah, officer, listen. You're not. You're treating me like I'm a minority right now. So yeah. that's why I'm filming you. That's why my camera's out because you violated my laws. And my father happens to be Chris Stefano from Geico. That's, so you better just back the fuck up. That's what it is. All right, my father's Andrew Schultz. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, my father knows Andrew Schultz. At some point, he knew him. Yeah. Before he got arrested. Yes. Cause you know Christy going down, too. Yeah. <laughs> so that, all right. So here's the all checklist, right, so okay? Now, I, this is this is science. This is the, the part of this, this. You know, when we do these things, this is, this is scientific study. Yes. This is science right yep. here. So, fellas, if you want to know if you got a good girl and if you can proceed, these questions have to be fulfilled. Okay. Does her dad say, I love you at the end of phone calls? Okay. Does he? He does. He says, I love you. He says, I love you. He doesn't say live like the way Lynn does Just love says, you. love you. No, I asked her specifically. She said she, he uses the word, I love you. So you did ask her. I asked her all these questions I was just out kidding loud. with you, you fucking psycho. I asked her out loud, and she was laughing. So that's why I just think it's cute. Okay. Um, and uh, does he check on her? He checks on her all the time. He checks on her seat, makes sure she's safe. Yes. Okay, cool. Now, what does he do? I don't know. You need to know what the father does. They're from does. Iowa. They're so from I, Iowa. Yeah, so I don't know okay. what he does. It's something in the farmland. Okay, it has to deal with wrestling or corn. Yeah, We're it's gonna, what it is. It's got to yeah. be one or the other. Yeah, I do know who our, who our father votes for, though. Yeah. It's to the right. <laughs> <laughs> You're saying him and Lynn could hold hands going to the voting Yeah, booth. I'm just saying him and my mom will have a lot of... A lot in common, and a lot of they'll just have a lot of happy memories. Yeah, they'll have a couple gig giggles over some over some Lindsay's at Rudy's. Yeah, that's yeah. what it is. They'll yeah. agree over some things. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. There won't be any disagreements if they're eating Lindsay's in Eileen's house downstairs. No, it's because the doors are always open. Yeah, uh, both apartments they're always open. Yeah, always open. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So we got those answered. Now, um, like I said, a girl's relationship with her mother is no biggie. It doesn't matter. They end up growing up, and then it's just two women who can yeah. both give birth fighting. That's what it's happens. It's fine. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's not a big deal. Now, right. is she's screwed in. She's not even paying attention to the podcast Yeah, it's anymore. just what it is. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay, I told you the father's crucial, and then I sent you a picture of me flexing in the mirror in my, in my parents' gym. Yeah. So I'm just going. Yeah. Which, by the way, thank you for posting um, on History Hyenas. I woke up today to what my grinder profile would look like. I like how Giannis just posted his jacked arms, and he just let me go full body <laughs> with dad socks on and dad shoes. Yeah. It's like, if you would have went full body guy, it's just it would have been different. Yeah. But I, I, there's nothing I could do right now that is my profile on grinder. Yeah, it is your profile, and you look good in it. You sent it to me because you were telling me you look good. No, but that, but I just want to, I just want to, I just want to give, um, 
just a little addendum to the to the le- fellas and ladies that threw that pick. That was me three months ago. I've got more Jack since then. Yeah, so we're going to do an updated grinder picture. Yeah, but I and still... then we want to see Mike Emoji's grinder picture. Yeah, it's we're just see, what it is. We want everyone to make a grinder profile. Yeah. Right. Zach, I want to see yours. Yeah. Because Zach's body looks like George the Animal Steel. It's just what it is. He's jacked out. You can't see any skin. He looks like a bear. He looks like a full bear. And by, and what, another You're fun, a beefcake. Another funny thing you said to me, too, is that, because I told you she's really funny, and you said that's a bad sign because if she's funny, that means she has a male brain. That's correct. But that made you go point. Yeah, that made me go point. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if a woman is funny, it's a little bit of a red flag because it means she's got a male brain, and it also means she's she's beguiling, and it means that she knows how to manipulate because that's what we use our personalities for. Right. We use comedy f- basically to trick people. Yeah. You, to distract yeah. them. You yeah. know? Am I wrong? No, you're not wrong. Okay, I asked you, does she have fakes? You answered that question. She has no fakes. Does she got any tats? She's got no tats. Zero tats. Zero tats. Wow, that's pretty yeah. good. Yeah. That means her father's yeah. screwed in. The wildest thing she's done is she d- did a little blow in Iowa, but she went to Iowa State, so it's like you do a little blow there. How much blow are we talking? Just a little blow, she yeah. said. And um, and uh, and she has a Colombian ex. That's about it. I wasn't even going to go there, but that's... Wait, the- shut shit. I'm just kidding. Yeah. I'm just, that was just a joke. <laughs> I was just kidding. Shout out, I loved Colombians. You yeah. know that I love Colombians. It's a good country. Yeah, yeah, it's a good country. I'm just kidding. Yeah. Yeah, but I that's that was a cocaine joke. Does it have anything? Yeah, I should have just left it as a cocaine joke, but it's actually he's being true. Yeah, well, that's why I did it back to back. Yeah, cocaine. Okay. Does, it it cocaine. Any, does one thing have anything to do with the other? Yeah, it was just Colombians do coke. Was he coke. giving her coke? I don't know. Yeah. Well, we got to find that out. Yeah, well, yeah. And she also told me that the day, the day that he was, this is true, she yeah. said, um, he was deported. She was like, no. She was like, she was like, we can never. She was like, it was always weird. She's like, literally, like we landed in Iowa. Mm-hmm. Um, we landed in Iowa, and she knew, like you know, everyone knew we were coming. And then my grandma died, and I was like, I know why she died. <laughs> 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 yeah. And then she laughed at that. So when yeah. you can do jokes to a woman like that, and yeah. then she just laughs at yeah. him, it's good to go. Yeah. Because she's kind of like woke and dope, like Venetia. That's what I like about her. Yeah. She's like Venetia, woke and dope. Who's my work wife? But she doesn't overdo it. No, 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 no. It's the similar thing as Venetia. Woke yeah. dope. Um, like Soho House and Welcome Dope. Yeah. Dressed trendy, really pretty, cute, cool. But, you know, her father votes for Trump. So it's like... You Best could, of both worlds. You could just have... I'm going to be honest with you. It's yeah. just... Not that I'm voting for Trump. I don't know. My political affiliations, I'll never tell you who it is. It doesn't matter. But it is real. It's the but same. But if you as- listen to this podcast long enough, you can take a pretty good guess. Yeah, if you could just if you just go to patreon.com slash Bay Ridge Boys, I let it all hang out there. <laughs> Um, but, but, but I did, I voted for Hillary. I told you I voted for Hillary in 2016. You know that. Jesus Christ. I did. I know that's, it's just, it's, that's rough to hear. Yeah, I did. Coming out of a face that looks like that. I know, Pat Finnegan. I voted for Hillary guy. Yeah, Pat Finnegan is, guy. he had a problem with that. Yeah, does he know that? Yeah. Yeah, but let's be honest, you did it for your career, because at the time, you were really prancing around for a sitcom. Yeah, I did, yeah. They made you gay. Yeah. Yeah, if you watch the fucking pilot for They Did You, you're a gay guy. I'm a gay man. Um, but, um. Um, what was I gonna say? I was gonna just say you why saying, I like her. You were saying her boyfriend, her ex boyfriend is Colombian. No, but there was something. Another point I was gonna get to with her. I don't know. She's oh, I just in general. It's like comedy, yeah. comedy and girlfriends. It's just better if they're a little conservative. Like if the more conservative they are, the just more shit. You just more I could be myself. Because as soon as <laughs> you know, you get like this fucking liberal ass girlfriend or liberal ass audience. Like you just can't say or do anything fun anymore. Right. So it's like you know, it's like. I think women that are uh, skew more conservative, just a little bit easier right now in 2019 to deal with, because they'll just get in the kitchen and make my food. Yeah, and if Chris <laughs> and if Chris makes a joke, if Chris makes a <laughs> if Chris makes a joke at you standing around uh, close to a comedy room, yeah, you're just gonna giggle and laugh because he's bigger than you and he knows how to move hands it's around. It's just what it is. Just, I'm, just, just giggle and laugh yeah. like you would in high school because yeah. a bigger kid who's good at sports and who also knows how to move hands around is yeah. making a joke Yeah, I'm you. just getting tired of it. It's yeah. like, listen, guy, it's like, you know, I was, you know, was a good friend of mine, but like, you know, on Saturday night... I'm- Said one of my jokes wasn't funny. I was I like, guy, I'll flush your fucking head down the toilet, okay? <laughs> yeah. It's like, listen, the truth of the situation. Let's cackle the names, is, please. You know what? Yeah. It's like, what do you what do you want cackle. me to do, guy? It's yeah. like, yeah, I'll fucking <laughs> right in you, and <laughs> you'll right. do nothing. There's more cackles. Yeah. We're back. The yeah. whole thing. The whole thing. It's like, do we just have to pretend Why? everybody's a fucking saint because they're not white? It's like, guy, do you? I'll fucking field goal kick you. Talk to me like that one more time. All right? Yeah. <laughs>
Yeah. Okay. Uh, we. we I don't know where. I don't know where we're coming back. We're back again. <laughs> yeah. Are we back now? I have no idea. All right, we're yeah. back. I mean, I, yeah. Sorry, I'm hungover. We got. We got, <laughs> got steel pipe, Chrissy. <laughs> and, and, and then we got machete, Chrissy. Yeah. Where, yeah. It's just a little too much. Yeah. Sorry. Just, yeah. I mean, this, I, yeah. I should have went. You're yeah. cutting people now. Yeah, I'm wild. Yeah, you can hit people, but you, if you, yeah. I mean, yeah. Just, are we back? I don't know. Venetia will make the decision. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. So anyway, no. It, I mean, yeah, but I'm just, you know. You're saying. Am I wrong about having a conservative wife's a better life? I, I don't know. Venetia, is it true? I see your point with in comedy, but uh, yeah, it, to each their own. To each their own. Yeah. Perfect. There's no way you're ever g- going to be with a guy who votes Trump, even though your dad wants you to be with one. No. He's no. a Greek father. No, he's not that Greek. He's not father. that Greek. No, no, no. I noticed he's that he's not that Greek because I, s- I flipped through your Instagram and I've seen who your friends are. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah no like, Greek father would allow that. Because when you say conservative, you don't mean. <laughs> you like know what I mean? Send them back. You mean like. No, can no. take a joke. Is yes, what exactly. I, mean. I, don't, yeah. I don't mean. I don't mean like. Isn't compl- it weird that we live in a time now that the conservative kids are the more ones that are okay with jokes? Yeah. Exactly. Everything's fucking backwards. Like, for example, I dated a girl. I was dating a girl once and I was on a she group chat. She had a chat. tattoo on her tit. Yeah. No, no. She for was sure. like a real. And like, she. It was like this. She. She. Um. I sent a group. Uh, we was a group text with her friends because we were going to go. Uh, th- I was want to get them comedy tickets, so I just I known them both. I was just going on dates with the one girl, but the other girl was cool. And I put in the text, I said, "Hey guys," and then you know, um, this is what the deal deal is for the comedy show, blah blah blah. And then she, the girl I was dating, it was the last time I, I didn't even respond to. Her. I was like, "I'm out." She was like, "She was like, cool, thanks." She's like, "But we're girls, so like I know like guys is like very easy to just say." She's like, "But like." All that stuff is part of like the patriarchy and just went on. And I was just like, I just, you know, gave it the double tap thumbs up and then I never talked to her again. So it's like that person is just, it's going to be a nightmare right. to deal with that woman. You're right. So I feel like a girl like You're 420 right. is not, she, she does not vote for Trump and she yeah. will not vote for Trump. Right. But she's more, she's closer. She's not extremely, she's not extreme in anything. She's down the middle, but I'm saying she comes from a more conservative family. Right. So she's just a little bit more of a real person. Yeah. That doesn't mean she wants to throw anybody over the wall and she doesn't think, she doesn't agree with everything Trump says, but it's just very easy to talk to this woman. Right. I can say and do anything. Right. And she understands it's a joke and she won't jump down my throat unless I fucking and yell a slur, then she'd be like, "Not cool, babe." But right. it's like that's not cool anyway to begin right. with, and I wouldn't do that unless some unless I got a few in me. Yeah, unless you got a couple. Unless in the me. giants don't cover the spread. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, kid- yeah, I'm no, kidding. I'm kidding. I'm joking. That what? was a fucking joke. Salty dog. Shout out, salty, salty, salty dog. I, that was a salty dog joke. Yeah, it's a fu- you know for a couple of characters. Yeah, well, a couple of characters. But do you know what I'm saying? I know exactly what you're saying, and you happen to be right. And it's, yeah. I was just tripping while you were saying that. Tripping on that we're living during a time where that is true. It used to be the people who were more liberal and o- were open-minded were the ones who took jokes better. And now it's yeah. like the better audiences, the more open-minded audiences, ironically, are yeah. the most closed-minded politically. Of course. So it's kind of weird. Yeah, just watch any comedy special that has a, a predominantly you know, woke liberal audience and a woke liberal comedian. They, the only things they laugh at are things that are so stupid and they... They're not saying anything real. Yeah. Whereas the co- comedians that we like, if you comment on society as is, and it and they people are laughing at it, there's a chance those people are more conservative right. leaning than liberal leaning because the only liberal comedians, the real liberal comedians that get big laughs, you can't are, even know you don't even know what they're, you talking, know what they're about. talking about. You don't even know what they're talking about. You don't even know what It looks like someone who just got released from a mental institution and ran yeah. ran onto a stage. Yeah. you're like, what am I watching? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So yeah. it's like it gets and I, even even our boy. Do you see how it's and now it's coming at everybody? Now it's got nothing to do with. Race or religion or anything, they're just coming at you. Did you see Mikey Che? Yeah, Michael yeah, Che? Yeah, Seth Simon. I went at the kid again. I went at him. Oh, that's Seth Simon again? Went Seth after Michael Simon Che? Again, yeah. oh, see, but that kid, Seth Simon, he, he needs to get his head flushed down a toilet. No, but he will. Yeah. But the thing is, but you got to understand what people do. If, if anybody who's a fan of his, like, you got to understand, he doesn't want change, that kid. He just wants chaos. So right. he's more of the Joker than anybody. I know. That kid is the Joker. It's just disguised in mm-hmm. this white knight bullshit. He's the Joker disguised as Batman. So yeah. you got to understand that. I know that. that oh, no, I mean, I know I'm talking yeah. to. To, to the FFs that don't know. Yeah. It's like you don't support that because he doesn't want you to change. Right. He's the same guy that would go after Kevin Hart for making a homophobic joke right, right. 10 years ago when all Kevin Hart has done is changed his actions. Right. And of course he's not homophobic, but they just want to cancel you. Right. He, he, he will tether himself to whomever is big enough 
where people would listen and pay attention. Sure. So yeah. I now could, they're calling for Che to get fired, I mean, which he's not. Yeah, but it's, it's wild that they're calling for that. It's wild. Yeah. yeah. It's a I mean, wild thing. They're trying to get comedians fired. Yeah. Just because it's Michael wild. Che called Bruce Jenner five years ago, he said he was he used to be a fella. It's like, was he not? <laughs> yeah. He was, was a fella. Yeah. I mean, the, these trans activists are the, they're militant, man. Yeah. They're militant, and they are... You know, the, it's funny because the people who are um, opposed to the, their approach and a lot of the things they're asking for the most are lesbians and, and gays is the rest of the community. Mm -hmm. So there is sort of like, yeah, I mean, because when you think about it, and women as well, women are starting to go like, hey, you know, this cyclist just won her second, like, gold medal. It's getting weird. Like, what, she's transitioned? I, no, she, yeah, she was, a, you know, she used to be a dude. She used to be a guy. Yeah. She was born a guy. So however you want to call that. And yeah. I'm, I would be getting in trouble for the way I'm saying it now. And the way I'm saying it is just what it was. Yeah. yeah. She used to be a guy. She turned. In, uh, she transitioned to a girl with the help of modern science, because that's what it is, taking hormones. And, um, and she won races, competing yeah. against other females. And we have a bunch of these now. There's like a bunch of this is happening. And women are upset about it. Right. So the MMA one was the worst when that person first started transitioning. It was it just looked like a guy beating up women. It's brutal. Yeah. Yeah, it's brutal. What we have a cyclist and there's a runner, there's a, a few track athletes, right. there it's a bunch of stuff. And so there's controversy on it and it needs to be figured out. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Anyway. Well, yeah, so that's yeah, so that's just, you know. Back to the list. My two cents. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and then, by the way, we are talking about Robert Moses today, yes. who was truly fucking wild and a racist, and it's and it sucks that he was that way, but the kid got things done, so it's S -L -K S. Yeah, I mean, he famously... What his, <laughs> his man, I mean, can we get a Wei Zhang Xing there? I mean, yeah. I don't... Wei Zhang Xing. But, yeah, I don't he, condone he, he it. Did I'm push just saying, I'm not, I'm not condoning it. Yeah. I'm not condoning anything, but I'm just saying, it's like nobody's all good or all bad. So, yeah, yeah the kid had some... It was fucking racist, but you know what I mean? Yeah. There's a lot of people he didn't like that got fucking real nice houses now. Yeah. Because, and he, of, the, because of the groundwork he laid. Yeah, and he he was a Jewish kid. He was a Jewish kid, a so Jewish it's like, kid. boo fucking who, everybody cried for him. And I love how a lot of times Jews will go like, hey, I'm not white, I'm a Jew. It's like, you nah, know, guy, guy yeah. you know what I mean? Guy, yeah, guy. you got fucking psoriasis you're a like white the rest look, of us. Yeah, you're a white-looking kid, okay? Yeah. Yeah, if you got to put on Fuck, sunblock. Psoriasis is a white problem. Yeah, if you got to put on sunblock, yeah. you're a white fucking you're white. kid. You're white. I don't care what yeah. kind of shishki you are, yeah. you're white. Whatever it is, yeah. yeah. Just fucking get the tax break and shut up. <laughs> I don't know what that means. Yeah, I don't know. What does that mean? The white, I thought whites get tax breaks. No, they don't. Oh, sorry. Yeah, Wei Zhang Xing Zhang, please. Sorry. Wei Zhang Xing. Yeah, there's no race-based tax break, Chris. I wasn't sure while Trump's American, there should be. Wei <laughs> Zhang <laughs> 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 Yeah. <laughs> it's all a character piece. It's just a character piece. Anyone tuning around. in for the first time from the New York or the New York Times or whatever big gazettes listening and writing reviews, yeah, we're, just, character we're just doing character pieces. That's a real review we did. Yeah, thank you to the New Yorker. Thanks to New York and the New York Times, I heard, reviewed us and it's coming out next week. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So here's the next one. Um, the next question is Does she like Hari Kondabulu's comedy? And she said, No, who's that? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that's, that's a, a good, good sign. That's good, yeah. That's a good sign. I'm not saying I don't like the kid's comedy. No, okay? but but you know what I mean. It's like that virtue. I don't, I don't shit. like what he did. I'll yeah. be completely honest, and okay. I would say it to him. I don't like what he did. Right. I don't agree. Well, with we should him. have him on the podcast. Yeah, I'd love to have and him. Then, and then he's the, a nice guy. The good, like, thing, the good thing about this podcast, I'd like to him to explain. Let's have him on. Yeah. And then the thing is, like, what won't flush his head out of toilet? Exactly. They start to pop off, then they get their heads flushed down the toilet, and they just are reminded that we're still men here. Yeah. And you can't talk to him the way you talk to me. Your head's gonna get a little wet. Yeah, especially because you know how to move around hands. I just can throw hands now. And yeah. it's just that's little chaos. Yeah. And I'm about two eighteen. And I'm I'm just cutting carbs out, so I'll knock your fucking head off. Yeah, but it's all a character piece. It's just a character piece. Yeah. I won't hit you. You're a nice it's, guy, and it's not going to happen. I'm a nice guy, and I'm just kidding around, but it's like... But seriously, you will get your head flushed down a toilet. Yeah, it's just like, I, I mean, how much do we have to... T I'm, I'm done tiptoeing. My calves are tired. Yeah. Okay, let me see what else. <laughs> 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 so that's a good way to put it, right? That's what it is. We're just, it's just, it's, oh, you're kind of just getting sick of it now. Yeah, guy. It's just kind of like, I'm getting sick of pretending too. Yeah, I it's just, like, I, I don't want to pretend anymore. Yeah, I just want to put on my flats. Yeah. <laughs> get off my tippy toes. You want to get off your heels. Yeah, I want, yeah. I just want to get into a pair of heels, clear heels. All right, All right. what's the next thing on the list? Because I want to talk about Robert Moses. Yeah. Um, we also got a comic quick coming. I said, uh, <laughs> okay, this is, this is important. This is an important one. Since you're a comedian, yeah. you have to find out who she does like. And if you, it's a friend of yours, yeah, when when you got to bring that person around or make sure you bring yeah. her around, and then if she wants a picture of that person, yeah. believe do you it's know, over. Do you want to know who her favorite comedian is? Who, despite it all, yeah, which is another. And again, not saying for or against anything, but even though I love him too because he's one of my favorites. Do you want to know who her favorite comic is? And she knows everything about everything. Who, Louis C.K. 
That's her favorite That's comic? That's her favorite comic. Oh, okay. Yeah. She All was right. like, I just think he's the best. She oh. was like, and uh, yeah, I just think he's the best. All right. Well, look, good, good luck to you in 420. Yeah, yeah, thank you. And 420 is her birthday, which is also yeah. when, when weed got legal, right? 420. 420. Yeah, that's yeah. That that's yeah. No. yeah. It's just the the number they chose for yeah. some reason. It's, yeah, well, it's National you know, Weed Day, and it's also you know whose birthday. Yeah, and and I'm just I don't I'm not comfortable with the fact that you knew that that you know his birthday. Well, I mean, it's, you know, he's. Um, I'm not comfortable with the fact that every time I come over to your house, the Nazi symposium is still on your coffee table. Yeah, it's because <laughs> I'm I, I'm starting to suspect you're reading it more than once. No. I'm the starting Nazi to suspect you're re- yeah. I'm starting to suspect you're rereading. No, I it. just can't get through it because I like because I'm just Chrissy Chaos. I've ordered eight books and I'm trying to read them all simultaneously. Yeah. Well, I saw that one out there, and then I saw Toni Morrison's book out there. Yeah. So that's you in a nutshell. Yeah. All right. You're reading the Nazi symbiosis, and you're putting it down, and you're reading Pretty Woman the book. It's just one. So it is. we got a problem. Yeah. I'm you're, just yeah. That New Amsterdam book is fucking wild though. Yeah. I mean, I got a lot of things to say about New York City that we'll say once I'm done with the book. Yeah. You're a five on the Kinsey scale. It's what it is. We I'm never a full found. Five. We never found out what uh, Mike emoji face is on the Kinsey scale. Yeah. Well, I mean, he went. Where were you again? You were in Santa. What were you doing? Did I'll somebody die? Mom. No. Oh, okay. I, I mean, don't think my, my grandma died in August, but it was kind of low back than that. Yeah. Kinsey needs to add a number for someone who will fucking anime. Yeah. Yeah. He's attracted to anime. Yeah, attracted yeah. to anime. And that's Mike. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so let's call that up. It's somewhere between a four and a five. Let's call it a four point two. That's a where Mike is in the, the Kinsey. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So do you want to get? Do you want to do the ads in the Patreon first? Well, we Dave, only have a few, so let's just yeah. do those next week. We, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Let them pile we, up. We did yeah. most of them on Friday. Yeah, um, that's oh, true. We had some funny ones. My God. Yeah, we yeah, they were really good. I mean, they're starting to get like they're starting to get nuts. And you know what? Because there's so many now, people have to get so inventive to become unique, and uh, they're doing that. And I will say, very, 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 very rarely, maybe never, has anyone even repeated a name. Yeah, they always are unique. Yes, I mean they may be close to one another at times because only so many we've things had to a choose few, from. We've had a few poop shoots, Chrissy's poop shoots, cr- crack open Chrissy's yeah, poop, poop shoot. shoot. Yeah. yeah. Oh, and real quick, can we? Can I just? I just want to give before we move on because then we're getting to Robert Moses. I just want to sing. I just want to shout out um, <laughs> our new song. <clears throat> this uh, from our Patreon member Bridget Tooted and Booted Griffiths made up a nursery rhyme character piece song, which is nice. I can sing this to the baby. Yeah. This is nice. <clears throat> I'm a little non-toot, wild and stout. Here is my chain guy, I'm wearing it out. When I get all horned up, hear me shout. Crack me open and clean me out. Yeah. Thank you, Bridget Tudor to Buddha Griffiths. Bridget, you're a 10. Yeah, that's that a is... 10, out, 10 out of 10 song. And, uh, you know... Um, we will be coming out with the History Hyenas children's book soon. Absolutely. Without, with, you know. Yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, yeah. That, that's in the works. That's in the works, yeah. So you can be confident that that will be coming Yeah, once soon. my daughter gets out of prison, we will do that. Because, <laughs> I mean, she's just, she hit another kid on Saturday, and it's just oh. SLKS. She's moving hands at people a lot. She's just moving hands, and she's lefty, so it's very hard to block. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we, yeah, she just she's th- a southpaw. Yeah, it, it it's it just in there. She's listening. She's the Puerto Rican girl for her mother from Sunset Park, her grandmother from, you, you know, just like Stefano's a fourth generation barber. Yeah, she's a twenty generation Puerto Rican. It's just what it is. <laughs> it's just it's, in there. It's just what it is. It's that's okay. She's got a little fire. She's a little fire. She got a little fuego in there. Yeah, she's just absolutely. Got a, she got a little fire. Yeah, I think this is the longest I've gone without taking the mic out of the mic stand. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, people yeah. always talk about how I take it in and out, in and out. It's what I do. It's my business. I take my glasses in and off, on off. I'm an 80 year old kid. <laughs> it's just what it is. So yeah. So today we're going to talk about Robert Moses. I mean, Robert Moses. First of all, the thing is, I know we talk a little bit about new. I know, I know. Sometimes we talk a lot about things that happen in New York City, and it's like just deal with it, guy. Okay, you got to just deal with it. It's like, wh- what do you want me to do? What do? You, what the fuck else is there to talk about? Sometimes it's like. New York, New Amsterdam, this is just where it all began. We're not going to talk about New York every week, but it's like, you know, sometimes it's just New York-centric topics because it's like... More stories happen within 10 blocks here than all of the state of Iowa. What are you going to do? We go corn, wrestling, and we're done. That's it. Corn, wrestling, and Chrissy's new girlfriend. And that's That's it. it. (laughs) It's just what it is. That's it. Yeah. So, um... The only thing about 420 is she does like to take a little ayahuasca. Is that all right? She likes to go to another dimension sometimes. She's got a third eye. <laughs> I don't know. Is that okay? She wants me to go to Peru with her and do a little ayahuasca, and I'm considering it. I'm Chrissy Considerations. Uh, I know Allie told me she did it. 
And yeah? Yeah. She told me she did it, and she said it was like, well, she had some big awakening. And then she, and rea- yeah, she realized yeah, I she feel wanted like to uh, Yeah, I feel like you're just going to get paranoid and start throwing hands at things. Well, she said you do throw up, so I don't like to puke. No, you don't like to puke. Yeah. Yeah. And you know you got to do it down over the wall. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you got to go to Peru. I yeah. mean, you could do it out. You know, they could do it here, but she's like, you really got to go. You got to bring Peru to a shaman because he's also on ayahuasca. Yeah, you, it happens down there in Mexico. That's well, where they th- do she it. She said Peru. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, by the way, real quick, just real quick, and then we're gonna get to Robert Moses. Do you think I'm wrong for uh, one of my closest friends? I mean, I grew up with this kid. Hold on a second. Let me put my seatbelt on. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I grew up. Whenever with Christy this... starts, do you think it's wrong? Yeah. Yeah. I grew up with this kid. Okay. He's not gonna say I helped an old lady across the street. Yeah. Since we're five years old, yeah. I grew up this kid, and he asked me, you know, he's getting married next year, and he asked me to be, he's going to have, instead of having, like, a whole wedding party, he's just going to have two best men, me and his other close friends, which is going to be three of us. Yeah. Um, and he wants me to go to the wedding, which is next year sometime, but it's in Mexico, and I don't want to go. <laughs> I just don't want to go there. Yeah. Is that wild to just, I just don't want to go. I don't want to go. People get killed podcast? there. I just don't want to go there. I'd rather just not. Go down there right now. I just is it, that wild to say? Is he a fan of the podcast? Yeah, he's a he's a, a good friend of mine. He's a good friend of yours. So. Yeah, I mean, if he listens to this episode, whatever excuse you give, he's gonna know that just you don't want to go beyond the wall. I, you know how it is. I could back out of it. It's like the same thing how I told you know with the impractical jokers because I made something up, but I just got invited again. <laughs> So it doesn't matter. I just get it. I'm, I'll fucking. I'll, I'm yeah. Chrissy Charms. You're Chrissy Charms. I'll just and it's running out, and I'm aware of that, so yeah. I'm turning it up. Yeah. So I could just do whatever <laughs> yeah. to finagle it's a ca- out. It's a character. It's piece. on the way out. I yeah. can feel that my charm is on the way out. Yeah. So in a last ditch effort, my body, much like when you're dying, your body just puts on the backup generators to like give it one more juice, one more test, and then it dies. That's what's happening with my charm. Yeah. I'm starting to just curse people out and get a little too wild, so I could feel it waning. But just for certain situations, I can really just be super charm because yeah. I know it's almost it's all but gone now. Yeah, because you're like Chris Chrissy Cinderella. Yeah. It's like your charm is gonna expire at midnight. Yeah, unless I find a fucking shoe to slip in. Yeah, your your char- yeah. your charm is a little glass slipper. Yeah, and that's another thing I like about 420. She's got big feet. She fit I fit in her shoes. <laughs> <laughs> you could probably. She's a tall drink of water. She's a tall drink of water. She's How a tall? tall drink of water. How tall? She's she's. If she put on some heels, she's probably right up to my eyebrows. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So she's about yeah. About yeah. Also, no fumes. Go ahead. No <laughs> fumes. Yeah. How big? It just of, need to be said. Yeah. How big of a fan is she of this podcast? She said she will listen to Patreon, but I forgot we're on the free episode. <laughs> Wild. <laughs> It's just character piece. Yeah, I mean, if she really likes you, she'll stay with you. Because you're saying all positive things. I'm saying all, I mean, I They're really, inappropriate, I, but they're positive. I really like this girl. You're Chrissy positive, but Chrissy inappropriate. It's just what it is. Yeah, yeah. I told her father not to listen. Yeah, you definitely don't want her father listening. It's yeah. what it is. Yeah, it's what it is. Okay, so would you, do you think that's a, that's an honest, like, if I don't want to go to Mexico? If the kid was getting married anywhere in, in the 50 states, I'd be there. Right. Which part it's, of Mexico? Uh, I don't know, you know, whatever. But people get killed all, all over. I mean, you're drinking the water, you're fucking getting shot in Cancun. I mean, it doesn't matter anymore. Uh, it's more Kids the just get... areas. Uh, it's more interior, no, it's not so bad. People got killed in Cancun a, a month ago. You're, you're talking to a spokesperson from Mexico. He's letting you know what the deal is. Yeah. He is Mexican. So what are you saying? You think it's safe? It depends where he's going. Call your fucking abuelita right now and let's find out. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, She's wh- dead, and they were all born here. Did she but... fall off a roof, too? Yeah. Dead. Yeah. <laughs> Christmas decorations. Um, I mean, funny. what do you think? You think, you think <laughs> if this would be funny if just everyone, when, when all his, when his family's like, ah, I got to go check on the roof, everyone's like, don't go. <laughs> yeah. Don't go to the roof. As soon as they get on the roof, they just die and they tumble down. <laughs> so what do you think? You think if it's in Cancun, it's safe? Um, if it's in Me- Mexico City or something, like interior, uh, then you're in, a, in a nice area, yeah. If it's in a resort, I mean, that's kind of, I don't know. I wouldn't go off the resort. That's, that's where But I'm dangerous. saying in the resort, you're good to go. Yeah, we thought to get to the resort. I mean, That's you're going to drink. You're probably going to wander off. I know you. Yeah. So you're going to just see something shiny and end up with your well, head on the thing. That's so. what I was thinking about. It's like, yeah, the resort. But it's like, what about cabs getting to the resort? Can't they just fucking hijack no, those? No, they, it's, the it's hotel pretty, kind of. They help, yeah. yeah. They, like, pay them off pretty much, right? Wait, you talking um, about Cancun? I think it's in Cancun. Cancun's not even like a part of Mexico. It's yeah. like a carved out part. But I've been there. I was there two, two, three years ago. You didn't feel safe, guy? I didn't love it. No, I didn't. To be honest, I didn't love it. You didn't love it. I just don't like going there. And yeah. it's like, I know it's a kid's wedding, but I, I, and I want to go. I mean, I love him, but it's like, guy, just Skype me. Let me FaceTime in <laughs> yeah, and make a speech because I don't want, I just don't. The thing is, I don't want to fucking have to go to a place I don't really want to go to. Yeah. Just, you know what I mean? It's yeah. like, if the wedding's anyway. So it's like, am I a dick? It's like, I got a kid. I don't, I don't want to, I don't know. Yeah. I know anything can happen yeah. anywhere, but it's like. I'll be honest. I don't want to go there either. So Yeah. It's I like, I just I don't, don't want to go to that. Co- I don't want to go. I you know? You. Is that wild? Am I wild, V? Am I being a dick? 
little bit. I am I being mean, a dick. I, that, I like it. I've always wanted to go to Mexico. And they're, if it's a wedding, they're going to organize it. They're going to make sure that everything's okay and it's safe. They're not going to bring their loved ones and put them in an endangered you know, place. But it's like, does everybody have to be a spectacle? It's that like, guys, just get plan, married though. at St. Matthias. I got the hookup. I'll get you booked. <laughs> My mom knows. Yeah, my yeah. mom will right. just get you to room. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's a year away. You know, you got All right, fine. Yeah, yeah well, maybe, maybe I should just try to fucking the same. Here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna try to convince him to get married in Ridgewood, or I'm gonna ruin their engagement. Same thing with Giannis. I'm gonna try to convince him to Bay Ridge, or I'm gonna burn his house down in North Salem. It's one or the other. Yeah, it was funny what I, I texted him. I said, "What are you doing?" And he texted me a screenshot that he was looking at houses in North Salem. As soon as he told me he closed, I went right to Zillow and put in North Salem, New York. <laughs> Congratulations. Oh, yeah. Kids are fucking home on Kids got two homes. Yeah, ah. yeah. Yeah, kids got two homes, but, you know. By the way, Chrissy's going to be at Gotham Comedy Club. Guess who else is going to be at Gotham Comedy Club? Mike, Mike Muth. Mike Emoji Faith. Mike Emoji Faith is opening. <laughs> he will be opening, and if you go... Did I tell you you could feature a host? Um, you didn't tell me which one exactly. You're just doing two men, I thought. I was just going to do it. Well, that's what I told Haybert. <laughs> <sighs> Okay, yeah, we're just doing a two man, but you know, Sergio, if you listen, you can host. <laughs> <laughs> listen, and if you if, if you come to any one of the live shows on the eighth and the ninth, remember those are the podcasts. You can if you want to see Chrissy's act, yeah, you get tickets for fucking Gotham. November 29th, 30th. It's Cause, a different are you home? show. Do you want to come? Cause I yeah. Do you, you want to come be on the show? And if you go, I may drop by and do some fucking guest. Yeah, spots. Yanni may do a guesty. Yeah. Yanni, my bestie may do a guesty. Yeah, so just go get if you bought tickets, go get tickets again to see Chrissy yeah. do his act at yeah. Gotham. It's fucking 2020. You can see Chrissy do a podcast or you can see Chrissy do his act or you can see Chrissy fucking <laughs> crack open a toot if I let it's, you on the Patreon. It's just what it is <laughs> if I let you on the Patreon and it's also like, yeah, I got too many shows going on that we need to sell tickets for in New York. Yeah. It's stupid. <laughs> well, get them now I'm just taking tickets away from all my other shows. Yeah. Because Saturday's already sold out. What other shows? Saturday's are? a hard... Yeah. Oh, Saturday early is already sold out at yeah. Gotham Comic Club November 30th. So get tickets, tickets for available the other ones, but yeah. you know, you got to get them quick, guy. Yeah, you got to get I them mean, quick. I mean, you know, the kid, the kid, we're moving to, the hyenas are just moving tickets. Now. I mean, we're not moving tickets like Nate Bargatze, but we're getting there. Yeah. It's, yeah. yeah. But we are better people than he is. It's what it is. <laughs> yeah. We're not rotten inside. Yeah, it's what it is. Um, Cuz, literally, what, what would you say was the number one thing that helped you get through COVID and through the pandemic when you were quarantining here in the studio, you told me if I didn't have this one thing, it would be way worse. And what was that thing? I'm talking to the people out here who need a new mattress or who need a mattress. You go to helix.com and you get the mattress I got because Helix custom makes its mattress for you. Yeah, so what, 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 what Yanni Biden meant to say was they custom make the mattress for you. And if you go to helix.com slash wild, W-I-L-D, they're going to give you up to 200 American dollars off all mattress orders and two free pillows for the listeners that go to Helix Sleep. Dot com slash wild. That is helixsleep.com slash wild. Are you kidding me? Free pillows? Yeah. Who does it like a free pillow? Free pillow. All, all you got to do is take their two-minute sleep quiz, and they're going to match you to a customized mattress that will give you the best sleep of your life. Yanni, baby, I mean, you were sleeping like a baby in here. Yo, the, the, getting a good night's sleep is the most important thing for how you feel that day. Yes. How you interact with people, how you function at work. It's all yeah. true. It is the place where you spend the most consecutive hours. Baby, make sure it's comfy, wumpy. I have a Helix mattress, so we don't promote anything that we don't love. I love my Helix mattress. Go to Helix Matrix. Helix Mattress. HelixMattress.com. Ma yeah, Helix Mattress. HelixSleep.com. Cut all that wild. Out. So you go to helixsleep.com slash wild and you get a mattress or as Yarnix called a mattress and you get one, you take a two minute sleep quiz, you get up to $200 off all your mattress orders and two free pillows for the listeners. Helixsleep.com slash wild. Go sleep like a baby. We just like to give Binky an edit job. Yeah, it's what it is. You're going to need to sleep for the next four years in Biden's presidency. Helix has got you covered. <laughs> So Robert Moses is a controversial person. He's a controversial person. Well, yeah. Very controversial because of how racist he is and because he's sort of blamed for being like one of the first to really kick in gentrification into a new gear. Yeah, his nickname is the Master Builder, so that's not a good nickname. No, it's not a good Especially if you're white. Yeah. You don't want to have master out there. <laughs> you know, but he's, yeah. he's really <laughs> responsible for all the big... Um, 
you know, um, what, what do you call that? Infrastructure. The yeah. BQE. The yeah. Highway, it's bridges. him. 35 yeah. highways, 12 bridges, parks, Lincoln Center for the Performing Arts, Shea Stadium, housing projects, two hydroelectric dams, and the 1964 New York World's Fair. All him. All him. All him. All him. Yeah. Now, he just was a guy. Uh, he grew up in Connecticut, like real close to um, yeah. New Haven. New Haven, Connecticut. New Haven, Connecticut. Which got good. Shout out Pepe's Pizza. For great fucking Pepe's great pizza. the best clam pie. Yeah. Shout out Clem. And then uh, the, he ended up moving to Manhattan. He, he went to Yale. Wow, got, this kid went to Yale, Oxford, and Columbia. He's like your gay brother. Yeah, exactly. Kid he, smart, which I probably can't say. I should. Should we edit that out? No, it's fine. You okay. didn't say anything wrong, right? Yeah. No. Okay. So he was. He became a lawyer, but he he majored in political science. Um, what's unique about him is he just ended up, uh, he just ended up yielding this broad power that we haven't really even seen since. Mm -hmm. I mean, he was he never was elected to any office, but he sort of had these politicians in his pocket and was able to fucking move these levers and get shit done. Well, you know why? Why he's a Jewish kid? Yeah, screwed in. There were truffles to be had, and he found them and protected them at all costs. <laughs> 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 so here's all the positions he held. Now, this is the thing I love about local politics is, like, these guys fly under the radar. Yeah. You ever notice that, Mike? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mike's a smart kid, so he gets He's it. He's smart. Like, these guys, have old, they, they yield a lot of power, and they fly under the radar because nobody really pays attention to local politics, but that's really where everything happens. Yeah. I mean, at the federal level, it's just the executive and legislative branch, like, constantly in, in gridlock. Yeah. And then the judicial branch has, like, way too much power. Yeah, it's like exactly. people abuse you if you're a state senator. It's like, listen, guy, your whole fucking life will change because of the state senator. Yeah, because those guys are the ones who are, like, flying under the radar and really cutting deals that move on the grassroots level and are really getting paid off by companies yeah. to do specific things on specific blocks. Yeah. They control zoning, they control permits, they yeah. control a bunch of shit, and there's always a little bit of organized crime fucking attached to this yeah. shit. It's always. what it is. Not, yeah. not like it used to be. Yeah. From what I understand, gangsters aren't like they used to be, is from what I understand in Long Island. Yeah. So, oh, really? oh, yeah, you were out on Long Island. Yeah, I was out on Long Island, guy. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So this is all the positions he held, man. I mean, he, he uh, these are funny, these positions, because you'll hear them and you'll be like, it sounds like nothing. Right. right, but the guy was in control of the entire city for a certain amount right. of time. Kid lived till ninety two. So that's a fucking the kid lived long. He, Good juice. He was on keto. What was he doing? Maybe kid keto. juiced. Yeah, he juiced maybe. <laughs> yeah. So he was Long Island State Park Commissioner, uh, pre the president of the Long Island State Park Commission. By the way, he 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 did the no northern state, the southern state, the Taconic. I mean, he laid out Long didn't Island. He, he created. Didn't he lay out Central Park and Prospect Park? He no, that was uh, Olmstead. We'll do an episode. Okay, on Okay, sorry. Yeah. You're confusing your guys. Yeah. You, but yeah. Sorry. He, New York State Council of Parks, chairman, 24 to 63. I mean, for fucking 40 years, he was the chairman of that. But he, he had all these positions concurrently. He held all, a lot of these overlapped, and he was like six different things. Dude, he was, he was like, he, he had all these jobs. He's like Vanatia. He's, he's like Vanatia. Yeah. He was, uh, he, he was New York Secretary of State um, for a year. He was Beth Page State Park Authority. That's out in Long Island. For 30 years, he was Emergency Public Works Commission chairman uh, for a year. He was Jones Beach Parkway Authority president for 30 years. He was New York uh, City Department of Parks commissioner for 26 years. The Triborough Bridge and Tunnel Authority for 40, over 40 years. Yeah. Uh, New York State Planning Commission commissioner, New York State Power Authority chairman uh, for for 10 years, New York World Fair president for six years, office of the governor of New York special advisor on housing for one year. So yeah. with all these, they, they don't sound like much. Right. And you, it sounds all great. It, they're all great things because you may be listening and be like, why? So what's the problem with this guy? He's building infrastructure. Here's where it gets dicey. Yeah. So he, during the Depression, during the Great Depression, uh, Robert Moses met with uh, LaGuardia, Fioro LaGuardia, who's yeah. uh, an FF, LaGuardia Airports. Wasn't he FF? Was he like a true FF, LaGuardia? No. But he has like an art school. No. But, or no. was he like short and fiery? Zach went there. I think that's where Zach went. So to twirl around. Yeah. Right? You Sina went to Sinatra, Frank Sinatra. You, you went to Frank Sinatra school? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Twirled um, so around over there. Twirled, you twirled Fiorello around. LaGuardia, yeah. who was a sauce monkey. Ex mayor of New York City. I mean, you can't get more of a name like a Fior Fiorella Laguardia. Fiorella Laguardia. He's an old. It's an ex sauce monkey mayor. Yeah. And um, during the Great Depression, during yeah. the Great Depression, when people were, I mean, like they needed anything. I mean, they were selling their teeth in the streets. Robert Moses 
constructed 10 gigantic swimming pools under the WPA program, the Works Progress Administration, which helped create jobs. Now, here's the caveat in that. He made the swimming pools in the black neighborhoods 10 degrees colder because he didn't want them to go in it. Yeah, he said he thought— So that's the that's where we start to get, like, yikes. Yeah, he said that he thought black people didn't like cold water, so he made sure that they were a couple of temperature, a couple of degrees cold. But what he didn't realize is— all he had to do was create a swimming pool because black kids don't like to swim. It's what so it is. So they're just not going to get in anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's what it is. Yeah, so, he, so that was yeah. a big problem. And he also— He didn't even need to worry about the temperature. Just open the pool. Yeah, and if you guys are driving, if you're dri ever driving through New York City, going over the Triborough Bridge, and then it spans it to the FDR, and the FDR exit ramp is goes into Harlem. Keep going on your ways and go directly over to Ridgewood, and Lynn will give you a little uh, cake and yeah. a coffee. Yeah, we got to make a video and game. And you can where go see Larry. Larry we, needs to be put down. Yeah, yeah, Larry <laughs> needs to be put down. Where, like, you get, like, you get, like, if you're fighting, if you're in our in our, in our our History Aenea's video game, like, when you're fighting, if you can get to, to find the secret room where Lynn is, she gives you Lynn's a torch and your health goes up. <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah. how your health goes up. She just feeds you Lindsay's, and then you get bigger and bigger. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> By the way, um, can, can we look up real quick? Was he behind the um, Verrazano Bridge? I think he was. Was he? Can we? Can, I mean, the kid did so much, and he yielded so much power that he really is national history. He's yeah. not local history. Yeah, but Robert Moses is a giant of American sure, history. Yeah. Because, and let me just really, fin really quickly just finish the point that I had, and then you go back to you. Is the exit ramp on the FDR? It goes into Harlem, yeah. and really the better way, the better right. way for it to have been done to, to create less traffic and just be more economical would it would have been if the exit ramp went to the Upper East Side, no. but too many rich people lived in the Upper East Side. Too many, too many white, white people. people. Too many rich white people and rich white Jewish people lived in the Upper East Side, so th he didn't put the ramp there. Instead, he put it into Harlem, which was a predominantly black neighborhood back then, mm -hmm. and just made it even, made more pr more traffic, more congestion, you know, even even I read I even went furthermore and I read some sociology paper that said because of the traffic and the loud beeping, it even made like you, people slept less and less, therefore making them angrier and angrier. And they just the whole quality of life was down and it contributed directly to the you know Harlem being basically on fire for the whole 60s, 70s and 80s. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I believe that. It's a mess. I believe that to be true. Yeah. It's a mess up there now. Yeah, when you now go the donks now, are up there. And, yeah. The donks are up there. But I mean, yeah, the highways up there, it's a mess. I mean, it's, it's still congested a mess. when you're going from east to west to get into George W. Yeah. It's just a mess up there. Yeah. And he put it all up there to-, to On purpose. On purpose. He did his whole- He didn't. He hated public transportation. He just wanted highways and he wanted to go directly through uh, minority neighborhoods. He did not care about them at all. No, That's 100% true. He displaced them no problem. Yeah. And uh, yeah, the kid you can say um, was definitely in bed with the auto lobby because uh, all his plans were for automobiles. And if you don't know, the way that the that the country looks post World War II was directly the result of the auto lobby's request, the auto lobby's wishes uh -oh. yeah. to make it so you had to have a car. Wait That's a what the suburbs are. Wait a second, this Patrick Mulroney chiming in. Wait, go back to that, Mike. There might be a situation. So the Verrazano Bridge, which is the bridge that separate that um, connects Brooklyn and Staten Island, yeah. which is my two homes, Brooklyn and Staten Island. That's where I go back, forth between. Was this thing built by Sandra Day? Because it says Otmar Amin. <laughs> it was one of uh, Robert Moses. Maybe choke on water. If that was Otmar Shut Amin, up, Smith water. Smith out, if that was Otmar Amin, the kids of Sandra Day, can we? If these kids of Sandra Day, I mean, I gotta get a boat. <laughs> <laughs> Way some shit. You're gonna protest? Yeah. You're not getting on it? I'm not getting on it. If it's built by CRG, can't trust it. Wait, I gotta, wait. I gotta get a boat and get myself some swimmies. I thought it was I thought it was it was commissioned. It was, it was commissioned Moses. by Robert Moses, but my brother was the chief architect. Yeah. Armor Amin. Wow, where's he can we can we just get a where's quick search on who's he wears? Oh, from? just full text Fuchsia Fietzenberg. <laughs> His job. No, I was I was on the laptop before. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so where's he from? The the architect. Where's the kid from? Uh, I'm pulling up right now. Switzerland. Okay. Yeah. But the kid Otmar Amin. But the, is he Mazda Alto? No, I don't think so. Okay. Not that it would matter. Not that it would matter. Yeah, that wasn't me. That was Patrick Rooney's character piece, Ladder 14. Which, by the way, Patty Flyball said the actual Ladder 14, mm -hmm. which is up in Harlem, does listen to the podcast and is going to send us free shirts. Ladder 14. Ladder oh, 14. Awesome. Thank you to the boys at Ladder 14. Do you know that that happened to just be a complete fucking coincidence? I know. 
And we, How wild is that? Patty Fly Ball said he's going to talk to them. If Jesus. we want to go visit them, we can do a video with them at Ladder 14, which is wild. That is wild. Awesome. Yeah. And it's just funny that we picked Ladder 14 somehow. Yeah. And it's, it happens to be his firehouse. Yeah, well, it's close. He said he's worked at Ladder 14. When they need extra guys, they go to Ladder 14. Yeah, what's he cooking today? Is he cooking? Is he on duty? Who's cooking? No, today he said because he's, he, 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 he fucked his rib up, so he's on medical leave. So he said he's he's uh, he's really not fighting fire. He's doing desk work. Oh, he's doing desk work. Yeah. That's why he went to the Ranger game. The Ranger got smacked last night. He was upset. After LaGuardia <laughs> retired in 46, um, Moses was, um, he was called and granted um he was like the de facto representative in Washington for New York City for William O'Dwyer, who is the mayor in 46. Yeah. I mean, that's a potato monkey if I've ever heard one. Yeah, it's a potato monkey bad. William O'Dwyer? Yeah. I mean, that kid should come with a fucking I mean, this at. kid, Robert Moses, I mean, he did, and he did things to, like, I mean, he, he didn't want Shakespeare in the park. It's like, you got to have Shakespeare in the park, you know? He didn't want, um... He didn't. He wanted to get rid of a shaded playground in Central Park. I mean, the kid, the babies need to play in the shade, or else they get sunburned. Because he wanted a, a bigger parking lot for Tavern on the Green, which is a good restaurant. It's got good food. Um, so I get why people were like, "Fuck this guy." He also didn't want big one too for me. The thing is with me, if you fought for the boys in any war, I don't care what you are, what nas- what you look like. You're fucking getting respected in this country. And Robert Moses didn't want black war veterans to move into Stuyvesant Town. Yeah. A development that was completely created to house World War II vets. So it's like, fuck you, Robert. He was he was the a, guy, these kids fought for the boys. Now now, yeah. I mean, we often talk about how history is just not neat and and tidy. And he did push the city forward. I mean, we're talking about the battery tunnel. We're talking about the FDR. We're talking about Triborough Bridge. Triborough Bridge. We're talking about BQ the Verrazano. But a lot of people had to be displaced too. Yeah, they had to. You know, the city had to buy up their property, probably for a, a, a cheap price, force them to move for for those ramps and those highways to come down. So people got displaced. Um, you know, he moved people around. He was a racist kid. He was, and he was a powerful kid. Like I was saying, he was. He was named the construction coordinator in 1946. It's a made-up job. By, uh, by Mayor William O'Dwyer. But he was basically... Um, yeah, but he, and he was also given power over public housing. Yeah, but that's right. the thing. You're so s- who was this guy? Okay, because, they were just giving him power. Because he was, he was ma- cause that's what it is. Yeah, he was, he was, you know, in print, he was named the construction coordinator by the mayor. But truthfully, he was named the construction coordinator by Carlo Gambino. That's who named him the construction coordinator. You're not going to do construction and coordinate it yeah. without going through the mafia in New York City. Yeah. And Carlo Gambino was running the mafia in New York City. So that's who appointed him that. Yeah. That's we, just a fact. We don't know that as a fact, but we're saying it's maybe. We're saying it's, it's a, called it's, the Chrissy fact. It's a Chrissy fact of the day. Yeah. It's, it's a, a CFO day. It's a CFO day. It's a Chrissy fact of the day. But it's possible. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. yeah he didn't like you know, other races. He also didn't like poor people. I mean, Wanted to keep the Dodgers, they like, fucked them. He wanted. Yeah, the, that, he was the reason they left. He's the main. He's the main reason the Brooklyn Dodgers left Brooklyn to go to L.A. is because the new stadium that was proposed by Walter O'Malley, another saw another potato monkey. Um, he refused to give them the land to want to, uh, which is wild that he even had the power to refuse the Brooklyn Dodgers. But he was construction coordinator appointed by Carl Gambino, maybe. Um, and the Brooklyn Dodgers left and went to L.A. And now they're just FFs that can't win because Clayton Kershaw cannot pitch in the big games. <laughs> <laughs> but if he was in Brooklyn, I mean, we'd be like, listen, Clayton, either you're going to fucking win these games or your family's going to get hurt. But in L.A., where everyone's drinking smoothies, you can do what you want, and then you fucking just lose. Yeah, he was directly responsible for the Dodgers moving to L.A. Yeah. Because he was being an, he was being an asshole. He was being an asshole. He didn't want the land. But the land was in Park Slope, guy. Yeah, well, that was no. The originally was in Park Slope. The original land was in Park Slope. But we're going to talk about that. Yeah, no. Yeah, yeah, originally it was in Park Slope, but it, it, then it was over there in Flatbush where they played in Ebbets Field. I remember where they played. Now, yeah. now there's a fucking Burger King over there. No, well, now there's a building there. Oh yeah, it's, yeah. And there's a plaque that says the Ebbets Field used to be there. My mother was a big Brooklyn Dodgers fan, and she has a heavy Greek accent. Yes. So, um, like his influence did reach outside of New York City. I mean, this guy was a giant of American history in the 20th century. Yes. Um, other cities hired him um, to to plan their cities. Uh, right. Portland, Oregon brought him over in 43, 1943, um, and he started doing his little fucking plans out there, building shit. Um, he was also instrumental in, in uh, building the interstate highways. Yes. Yeah. That was Robert Moses. Um, so, and an interesting fact about him is uh, the kid knew how to drive. He d- he built all these highways, and obviously was in bed with the auto lobby, and obviously built all these bridges. But the kid 
did not have a valid driver's license. Wild. So he was, all this time, he knew how to drive, but not legally. He never got a driver's license. He probably had a chauffeur the whole time. And he had his famous quote, which is, you know, wild when, you know, he wanted to, you know, when he was defending his forced displacement of poor and minority communities, um, because he said it was an inevitable part of urban revitalization. He said, I raise my stein, which is wild, just started with that. I raise my stein to the builder who can remove ghettos without moving people as I hail the chef who can make omelets without breaking eggs. Right. So it's like, that's why Venetia don't eat eggs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it is a hard thing to do. Even <laughs> now, with <laughs> gentrification, there's people who are having to leave parts of Brooklyn, parts of the city, because they can't afford the rent there anymore. But now you can walk through there without having to worry. It's like what, you know, there are right. things you have to do. Right. It's I just want to make it crystal clear that that was Mike that said that, and he is of Mexican descent, so he could say whatever he wants. He's not of Mexican descent. He's straight Mexican. <laughs> oh, yeah. He's yeah. He's just a Mexican kid. Yeah, he's just, yeah, he's Mexican. Well, yeah, I'm not he, from Mexico, but yeah. yeah. He's yeah. a Mexican-American. Yeah. <laughs> and, he's here, and he's here for a good time, not a long time. Trump 2020 over the wall. Yeah, the, the world. Uh, I thought, the, thought you meant diabetes. <laughs> oh, yeah, that too. <laughs> that too. Yeah. It, or, as, as a matter of fact. Or if yeah. he gets on a roof, it's just over. Yeah, be, it's going to be it's gonna be easy to catapult you when you got two less feet. <laughs> <laughs> so Moses uh, Moses started to go downhill like in the 60s. It all started to end. But I mean, it, what, his it, health or like no, his, his just poli- his power. Like I mean, the kid lived till the 80s. I mean, he lived to be 92 years old. I mean, that's fucking wild. But I mean, he's like a pompous. Yeah. And, and to, to think it's very rare for someone to hold this much power over a city and get shit done and be able to move people around and just get things commissioned and yeah. done. I mean, he was like the czar of building things in New York. Yes. It's kind of wild. I mean, nowadays, if you want to get something done, it's like all these parties arguing. There's permits. Every You know, it takes forever. This kid just made shit happen. Well, I mean, I'm, it's not a direct thing, but, I mean, really, who built the only guy who's built as much stuff as him in this city is probably Donnie Boy. Donnie Boy built a lot of shit in this city. They're not even close. Yeah. I know they're not even not close. That's what I'm saying. I'm saying as close to him. Nobody's. Uh, Donnie's probably the closest. Well, there's the Trump few, buildings. I think he's. Do, do, Trump's probably the loudest, but not even. Uh, Donnie doesn't have that many buildings. Yeah, he didn't do any infrastructure. That's His what's... father built a lot of buildings. Well, no, Donnie is fixing the infrastructure. The LaGuardia Airport, all that stuff that's changing. It's all. He's all about the infrastructure and the airports. LaGuardia right. Airport needs an upgrade. It's, it's, it's kind getting of gross. The new yeah. one's way nicer. Yeah. 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 So his rep- his reputation really like and his power started to go down around the, around the sixties, um, and uh, that was that was it, man. And, yeah. Um, but you know he's responsible for the LIRR. Yeah. I mean he, he laid everything out. New York, the way you see it, and, I, and a lot of sit modern cities copied it too. Yeah. Hired him, like I said, the interstate. I mean the kid was everywhere. Yeah. He was everywhere. Uh, people just forget that, like in the early 1900s, like people were just walking in the streets. A lot of the streets were still dirt. Yeah, there's just horses and horse shit everywhere. Yeah, it would, people like cars couldn't get through because people yeah. didn't. And it took a lot of work to get all that shit done, and it took kind of an asshole to do it. So. A little thing, a little thing too, like which is you know obviously extremely fucked up. If you ever take the Meadowbrook Parkway um, all the way out to get off towards Jones Beach, you'll notice as you're approaching Jones Beach, there's a lot of like bridges that are low that like. A, a bus could never get through, and that was Robert Moses on purpose. He did that because he didn't want minorities who frequently took buses and public transportation to be allowed to come out to the beach. They they could only come out if they had their own car, which would signify that they had more wealth. So that's something that, like, you just drive out there and you never even think about that. But it was Robert Moses's. It was his. Uh, it was his racism um, that caused that. But yeah, there was actually a biography that was written about him that really tarnished his reputation. Before that, a lot of people didn't know about him, um, didn't know all these negative things about sure. him. But the, 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 the book is called uh, The Power Broker, a um, very famous book. Um, Did you read it? No, but uh, th- it's a famous book by Robert A. Carroll. got read it. I just need another book well, to read. Well, it's a 1,200-page book. Yeah, but I'll just put it up. I'll, I'll get it on deck. I'll just put it next to my nightstand. So it gen- I got 13 books I'm reading simultaneously. Yeah. <laughs> So uh, Philip Lapote, who was a Sounds like columnist, an said Moses' satanic reputation with the public can be traced uh, to that book. Maybe Philip Lapote is going to do a review on us, too. <laughs> 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 yeah, guy. I mean, it's like the thing is, it's yeah, this guy. He created Jones Beach, too. I mean, the kid created every. The funny thing about him is like you, you look at something in New York, like a, a beach, a swimming pool, a building, the kid created a bridge. It. You're like, at some point, he, it, most of it is Robert Moses. Yeah. He has something to do with it. He, he has something to do with it. He did it, it or it, the, he commissioned it. Or, yeah, he, he, he so twisted. it's like, that sucks. You know, I mean, it sucks he was who he was. 
But it's like what you know. Yeah, I mean, the kid was just obsessed with with laying things out and building things. Yeah. So what are you gonna do? So uh, he he was a big lover of swimming, supposedly, and and um, kid's got a swimmer's body. I mean, he's got a long torso. Yeah, he finally died in West uh, West Islip. He, oh, he died, died out on the island. He died on the, the island. The kid loved Long Island. Yeah, so do you. Yeah. The same way I can't stay in Ridgewood I, for too long, you can't stay on Long Island too long. I do not like Long Island. But you're moving up to North Salem, which is just Long Island in Westchester. Yeah, yeah. God, you're coming back to the Ridge. It's never going to happen. There's no way I can wake wake up and walk around and just substitute you for Joe DeRosa. <laughs> <laughs> so there's plenty of state parks named after Robert Moses. He's got one in Messina. Ma- Mas- you know where all these places are in Long yeah, Island. Yeah, Robert, Robert Moses... State Park, Thousand yeah. Islands in Mass- it's in Suffolk County. And then you got Robert Moses State Park in Long Island, Robert Moses Causeway on Long Island, the Robert Moses Hydroelectric Dam in Lewistown, Long I- uh, New York. Shout out Smithtown Water. Yeah. And then the Niagara Scenic Parkway in Niagara Falls, New York, was originally named. But Robert they're going to change all those State names Parkway. eventually. As soon as, you know, as soon as Seth Simon gets this, it's just all going to be changed. Yeah. He doesn't have a. Is there a school named after him? I'm sure. Oh yeah, he's a school named after him in North Babylon, New York. On yeah, of Long course. Island. But this will. It won't. I guarantee you, in the next 15 years, they'll change his name it won't be robert moses for long yeah during his tenure as chief of the state park system uh the parks grew to nearly two million six hundred thousand acres by the time he left he had built 658 playgrounds in new york city alone plus 460 miles of parkway and 13 bridges so uh the kid was just like he was screwed in and tied into local politics and for some reason wanted to build everything and he definitely did not like black people yeah. So that's what it is. And yeah. you, you hate to see that because the Jews have been through some shit. Yeah. He was a Jewish kid who hated black people. What are you going to do? And what are you going to do? We talked about this. It's tribalism. You know, yeah. humans are not meant to live in this utopian coexistence. So what do you think? Doesn't doesn't excuse anything. But it's like at, at the end of the day, it's like, what do you want, guy? Yeah. I mean, what, what do you want? It's just it's just it, it, uh, I, I don't know. I'm just a, I'm just a pawn in this game, too. I'm just fucking playing the game. The BQE could be better. I mean, what he? Uh, what do you think about the you know final a, results? The you know BQE's a, fucking. How about this? How could about be this w- little wild fact about the BQE? It's a parking lot. The BQE. Ready for this? Yeah. I remember there used to be so. I mean, there still is always traffic on the BQE, but I remember there was so much traffic uh, when you go right under like the Manhattan Bridge, like right there's a, a span of it, like you go under the Manhattan and the Brooklyn Bridge just runs right under it, and I mean so much traffic. My father used to pick me up and take me back to his house on Staten Island, so we had to go that way. And I'm talking about it would take like two hours to get from Ridgewood to Staten Island, just traffic, traffic, traffic. And there were no cell phones back then, so my dad couldn't even, you know, put put money on the games. He just had to just deal with it. So he had to call it. We had to get off, and he had to call in from a payphone. But anyway, then in high school, in Archbishop Malloy High School, shout out Stan is St. Anners. That's the name of the team. Um, we had a career day, and an FBI agent came in and talked to us and told us that the, all that traffic, all the construction workers and all that on the BQE were actually undercover CIA agents, and they were scanning our cars right after 9-11 because they believed that a car could or a truck could blow up from the BQE, could blow themselves up, and then blow up the spans of the Brooklyn-Manhattan Bridge because the BQE goes right under it. Wild. Wow. So it was wow. fake traffic wow. that they probably still do. Wow. They were never construction workers. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah, well, that I mean, everything was heightened. It was yeah. heightened right after 9-11. I remember I called in one. You did? Yeah, there was a truck. We were shooting. You're an FF. We were shooting something underneath the bridge down in Dumbo before it was done. I mean, 2001, Dumbo did not look You're like You're a concerned it kid. Yeah. And we Always. Saw, it wasn't just me. It was a bunch of us down there. Yeah. And uh, we saw just a truck down there. And like, yeah, because, you know, that's what happens. You watch the news and you get, like, brain warped. Sure. And so we just called in the police. And it was just like a delivery. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we just called the police. We were like, there's a truck. It's under the bridge. Yeah. But but you know what? You See, didn't so call in any 9-11s? I don't rat guy. Yeah. I was raised not to be a rat. It's like, if you see something, say something. It's like, not New York guy. Yeah. You, you say it yourself. I would have I would have totally pegged you as someone who would have made a nine one one call uh, uh, against somebody who was behind a cash register at nine at a seven eleven. No, but no, but I you did. definitely have that look. Well, I told you right after nine eleven. I told you an hour after nine eleven actually happened on the actual day. A kid who's a firefighter now in my class, Petey, he threw a garbage can through a convenience store window. But they were Sikhs. They were Indian Sikhs. Yeah. Like get out of my fucking country. Horrible. Yeah. I'm like that's not them. Those at all. kids got. That's when they really got discriminated against. Yeah. I feel it. Like those kids, like they're like, yo, man, we're just Hindus. We're Sikhs. Yeah. 
India got nothing to do with it. By the way, Pakistan and India is going to go to nuclear war. It's just going to happen. Are they going to get nuked? It's bad. Are well, we far enough away where they can't get, no, can't get any on us? No, if they oh. go to nuclear war, we're all done. They both have nukes, and they're fucking... This, this dispute over Kashmir is wild. Yeah, it's like, I, I'm just here to tell you, Allah's not real, so put the weapons down. <laughs> Wait. Wait. All right, we'll see you later. <laughs> Listen, I'm on the phone real quick. Just I'm screwed in. I'm just doing... The baby's in jail again. The baby's in jail again. So I'm not not paying attention, Venetia and He's just fans gonna who get mad. Out. I'm just bailing my kid out, and I'm trying to make sure that the fucking Marquise is sold out for the Gramercy Theater because it's sold out. Sold out. I'm screwed in. Yeah, it's sold out. I'm just, yeah, I'm promoting myself. Andrew Schultz taught me. Lakeside Maple were brought to you by Lakeside Maple, guys. I am now a loyal... Uh, what do you call it? Buyer, eater of Lakeside Maple. Mike, you got to get on the Lakeside Maple train. So do you, B. That was really good what he gave us. Yeah. I... Mm-hmm. Consume that in two days. It's delicious. It really is like tasty, uh, baked in pure maple syrup. The kids screwed in. It's gonna blow up. Three three flavors: original ginger chai, spicy. Go to LakesideMaple.com. Put in the promo code Wild, fifteen percent off your order. Uh, take a video of it. We'll repost it. Um, support our sponsors. We're brought to you by Sadri, Sadra, Sadra, mm-hmm. Sadra, Sadra. Or was it Sadra? I can't remember how he told me to pronounce it. Mm-hmm. I met him. He's a cool kid. Mm-hmm. Sandra Azizi, uh, Sadra, Sadra Azizi. I think it's Sadra. Sadra. I think it's Sadra until he corrects it. Yeah, Sadra Azizi. He's a New York-based GI doctor. Go to his YouTube channel uh, if you want to watch some sneaker history, inspirational topics, some goofy medical education and advice videos for aspiring healthcare students and the general public. He's also a new toot comic. You know you're a non-toot. You're a fucking high-level non-toot. You're part of our matriarchy. Who's, uh, who's trying to become a comedian as well. His kid does it all. He's an actual doctor, and he's doing comedy. Yeah, and but it's like, guy, you know, don't, <laughs> everybody can't do comedy. Yeah, guys. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah. I love it. He's but one of like, our sponsors. He can do whatever he yeah, wants. Yeah, but it's like everybody's just like, yeah, but when we get to 2,000, we're getting new sponsors. <laughs> but it's just, I mean, not everybody can get these freebies forever. And it's like, guy, yeah. you know what I mean? I don't know if you're a funny kid or not, but it's like, does everybody just have to do comedy now? It's like, we got to just sit through, you know, this bullshit. It's like... You know, yeah. it's not for everybody, but whatever. <laughs> do what you want to do. I support your choices. Yeah. So, I voted for Hillary. Fuck everybody. Sadra Azizi, Sadra Azizi, Dr. Sadra Azizi dot com and go to his YouTube channel. Uh, we love the kid. Uh, this is not recording on the laptop. Is that OK? Yeah, okay. Zach's got it or he doesn't. Yeah. We don't know. I just it doesn't matter. Anymore. Yeah, Vanatia, we being recorded. We don't know. <laughs> yeah. uh, we're brought to you by CBD script. That's the official CBD company of the history. Hyenas podcast. Go to CBD script. S C R I P C B D script and put in your promo code hyenas15 to get 15% off your tor- total order of gummies, edibles, whatever kind of CBD you consume. Yeah. Go whatever, s- whatever escape from reality you need because your life's too hard, just go to this guy. <laughs> 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 yeah, cbdscript.com. We love you. And also, Ninth Street Auto Collision 631. Three five one five three hundred. Have you seen the picture of the kid? When, when yeah, no, he's a sauce monkey. He's bad. a fucking and he and he he's all, he looks like Mike. Yeah, yeah, and uh, Chris. <laughs> he's sauced out. He's sauced out. They're out there in Huntington Station. Yeah, for all your towing needs, for all your car needs. Uh, you know, you want your car to get cracked open and cleaned out. You need to be towed. You got a you got a collision. You need to be repaired. You need body work. Go see yeah. them, 9th Street Auto Collision. I don't know why they call themselves 9th Street Auto Collision, because they're located on 133 West Hills Road. It's just we've, what it is. We've never brought up that you guys need a new marketing director, yeah. because you're called 9th Street Auto Collision, yeah. but that's not your address. Yeah, just make your fucking website, you can only pay in cash.com. Yeah, why don't you call yourself... <laughs> you need to start calling yourselves 133 West Hills Road Auto Collision. Yeah, what are you doing? Because people are like, I'm on 9th Street, I don't see it. <laughs> <laughs> so go there. They've been doing yeah. it over 20 years. They work with all insurance yeah. companies. They do towing, yeah. et cetera. All right. We're brought to you by a healthy, happy smile.com. my fucking boy That's, right here. Yeah. A healthy smile family and cosmetic dentistry. I'm not even sure if he listens anymore. You I don't listen. care, but you the know. The kid's what? so rich, he just throws his fucking yeah, money. Yeah, we were everywhere. talking about like how beautiful his wife is. Like, he, him, he himself would get cracked open. Yeah. I mean, that kid will get punched through while he's giving me a cleaning. Yeah. Because you know what happened? <laughs> when we go down there to get our dent- with teeth done, which we're going to do, That's that good. is going to happen that me and Chris are going to go to <laughs> South Carolina. We're going to get our teeth done. What's going to happen is I'm going to get in the chair and Chris is going to get right in his lap. It's what it is. Yeah. And then you're going to yeah, you're going to clean Yanni's teeth while you're also cleaning my ass. Yeah. <laughs> no, what's going to happen is you're going to get in Dr. Harvey Spencer Jr.'s lap and his wife's going to do your teeth. It's what it is. It's what it is while he's doing my teeth. It's what it is. So go to a healthy happy smile.com. You can follow them on Instagram a healthy smile rock hill. Um, Doc, Dr. Harvey Spencer Jr., we love you. Uh, thank you. And we're brought to you by Nutrition Made Fun, of course. Yeah. My nemesis. 
This guy's the he's the bestest kid. Yeah, I mean, if your eyes are too far apart, he he does have a wrist resistance wristband uh, workout that will pull them closer together. That's what it is. <laughs> <laughs> so go check out Matt Koch. Join his programs. Listen to his advice. Especially follow him on the gram. Once you start following him on the gram, yeah. you can follow whatever. And he screwed it out because he put his ideas behind a paywall because he was just giving them out for free. <laughs> he was. And all his paywall <laughs> ideas are are revolve around our lingo. So thank you so much, Matt, for for uh, kind of. Incorporating our podcast into your health plan. Yeah, I Appreciate actually it. like that we got He's a few. He's great, this kid. And we got a few inaugural sponsors that, like, you know, you, you can help you in your life. You need your teeth Absolutely. clean. Absolutely. Take a trip. Take a fucking trip and make it fun. Go to uh, yeah. go to see Har- Dr. Harvey Spencer Jr. No, I appreciate it too for yeah. these sponsors, but the road's got to end somewhere, and it's ending when we get to 2,000 Patreon members. <laughs> so that's it. The Thank price you guys. is going up. Yeah, and we got some new Patreon. Yeah, members. and just real quick, we got some new Patreon members, and real quick, he doesn't pay us all, but he's just our boy. I just want to shout out Sergio Chacon. He's got a new podcast called yes. the DBS Podcast. I'm going to be so on. Go it. get that on iTunes and where, Google Play and you know wherever fucking else. He's probably got on public access. I don't know what he does. <laughs> yeah, but it's just like he asked me to be on it, and I said, you know, I'm going to be on it, but you know what, Sergio. Like I'm a little bit of a bigger fish f- for you to catch. Yeah, build it up a little bit build before it up I go a out there. Bit. Yeah. You know, I mean, just build it up before you ask me or Chris to go on. <laughs> yeah, it's like Serge. Because this is the biggest you know, promotion you're gonna get right now. Yeah, is go- so he's got a new podcast, and we love Serge. Go yeah, listen to like, it. Serge, it's like you're my boy, but I, you know, I grossed over a mil this year, so. <laughs> Where's your gene right Where's your there? Gene? Just Make it out. Yeah, we don't even know where it is because we're editing this it's into just a project. What it is, guy? Yeah. It's like you know, yeah. fucking just get a smaller hat. All right. Um, <laughs> Real quick, there's thank only- you for giving us Venetia, by the way. By the way, yes, yeah, yeah appreciate that. Yeah. Um, so there's only nine new Patreon members because what we it's just kind of um, you guys joined a little. We we gave the big one last week, but we every week we want to read out anybody who joins. We want to read out, so the floods come in more on. Um, they come in more. We read more names out on the episodes that come out on Mondays. And by the way, it's not searchable on. Patreon. We just finally learned. Mike told us a while ago, but we don't listen to Mike because we're fucking stupid kids. <laughs> but Mike tried to tell us this. But you cannot search for History Hyenas so on So how do Patreon. we make it searchable? They have to just know the link. Patreon.com slash Bay Ridge Boys. Yeah. You know what? Just go to HistoryHyenas.com and it's on there. Okay. Yes. Anyone who wants to join, tell them to come here to our website and they can find it on there. Directly linked. You guys will also put, be putting it on yeah. your Instagram to wipe up. Yeah, and like you got to join because we got people to pay. We got people to pay. Yeah. Um, okay, so real quick, a couple of the most of these names are just straight to the backs, which is totally fine. I'm going to read them out quick, and then there are two people who made names, and I'll read those out last. So straight to the back here for the content, Samantha Blake, Joshua Sanchez, Sean, Nino DePaulo, Sauce Monkey 10, Amy DeCoch, King Chorizo, funny, Jake <laughs> Simon, and then we got Rebecca, Irish girl with no fumes, McDermott, and then Amanda, I don't know my dad, but he probably works at Smithtown Water. <laughs> Wolf. She's the winner. So she's the, the winner. Yeah, that's yeah. a good so one. So she's a PPW. There's only yeah. nine of them. Thank you guys so much for your service. Um, I appreciate it. Yeah, we shout out Smithtown it. Water. Shout well. out Smithtown Water. Department. Yeah. Check one, two. Did he want to be on it? You asked him. I asked him. Oh. Fantastic. He's great. Yeah. That was a fantastic yeah. episode. You pulled up. Thank you. Pulled up a funny one. That we got lucky with that one. Oh yeah, sorry. What do we got to do? Oh, is there copy? So what are we releasing as a regular episode next week? Oh, shock. Hold on one second. Sorry about that. Okay, so let's say Tank's good news, right? And then Think Tank, and then he said we can go wild. It's Tank's good news, Think Tank, and Tank's an outro on Instagram. Right. Okay. You want to start or you want me to yeah, start? Yeah, start. And he said we could say, what, like, go wild, be silly. He doesn't care. Yeah. Yeah. 
And this is very exciting, guys. We have our first official sponsor, and he happens to be a friend of the podcast. He was actually a guest of the podcast. Our first official $500 sponsor. Yes. Uh, it's Tank Sinatra. Kids stupid. <laughs> <laughs> but go check out Tank's Good News. Yeah. No, I'm obviously I'm just kidding around. I mean, yeah. we couldn't be more thankful to have this guy as our sponsor. Tank's Good News on Instagram, Tank Sinatra on Instagram, and his podcast, which you've done, Giannis. Yes. Inside the, the Think Tank. It's the Think Tank, right? The Think Tank. Exactly. Yeah. That's what it is. Should we do it again? I'm gas digital. It's on Gas Digital. It's on Gas Digital. Well, no, so the they're going to have to give us more money if they want us to plug Gas yeah, Digital. Yeah, Gas Digital, the whole thing's behind a paywall. <laughs> <laughs> it's not good for podcast growth. Anyway, Tank Sinatra, Tank's Good News is an absolutely phenomenal um, Instagram. He's actually, this is great. It's great to have spot. I fucking eat Lakeside Maple. I fucking, I follow Tank's Good, ne good News. Um, it's all positive stories. Also, Tank Sinatra on Instagram. They're both massive no, Instagrams. Yeah, so go go follow yeah. Tank. You're going to be hearing about him every episode because now we got his money. Yeah, so go follow him because so his money's worth it. And also, for another good thing, yeah, the kid likes to do steroids. He's from out on the island. He's from out on the island. He's the, make no mistake, Tank Sinatra is the originator of Smithtown Water. Yeah, that's where it happened. So Smithtown Water Department. That's where it happened. It happened yeah. on that episode. I think he was actually criticizing Smithtown yeah. Water. And you just said, shout out Smithtown Water. And now shout out Smithtown Water. Shout out Smithtown Water. It's all from Tank Sinatra. And we're making t shirts and we're making money off his likeness. He's not getting a piece. He's giving us 500 a month. <laughs> <laughs> Go follow Tank's Good News on the gram. Love you. Yeah. <laughs>